the believer's mistake. We must not fall under the misapprehension that those believers who are deceived by evil spirits must be the most defiled, degenerate, and sinful. They are on the contrary oftentimes fully surrendered Christians, spiritually more advanced than ordinary believers. They strive to obey God and are willing to pay any cost. Unwittingly do they stumble into passivity because of the fact that although they are wholly consecrated, they know not how to cooperate with God. Those who are less serious about spiritual matters do not face the danger of passivity. For how could anyone sink into inactivity and eventually into the grip of the enemy when, though professing to be utterly consecrated, he persists in living according to his own ideas? He might give ground to evil spirits in other respects, but certainly not in the matter of yielding to God's will by delivering a passive ground to the enemy. Only those committed ones who disregard their own interests are open to passivity. Their will can easily slip into this state since they are most eager to obey all orders. Many will wonder why God does not protect them. Is not their motive pure? How can God permit such faithful seekers of His to be deceived by evil spirits? Many people will contend that He ought to safeguard His own children under any circumstance. They do not realize that to enjoy God's protection, one must fulfill his conditions for protection. Should a person fulfill the conditions for the working of the evil spirits, God cannot forbid the latter to work, for he is a law-abiding one. Because the Christian intentionally or unintentionally has surrendered himself to the evil spirits, God will not hinder them from the right to control that one. How many hold to the idea that a pure motive safeguards them from deception? Little do they realize that the people most deceived in the world are those with good intentions. Honesty is no condition for not being deceived, but knowledge is. Should the believer neglect the teaching of the Bible, failing to watch and pray even though trusting his pure motive to keep him from deception, he shall be deceived. How can he expect God to protect him? when he is providing the prerequisites for the working of evil spirits. Countless saints consider themselves beyond deception because they have had frequent spiritual experiences. This very element of self-confidence betrays the deception they are in already. Unless they are humble enough to acknowledge the possibility of being deceived, they shall be deceived perpetually. Deception is neither a matter of life nor of intention but one of knowledge. It is difficult for the Holy Spirit to point out the truth to that person who has absorbed too many idealistic teachings in the early stages of his Christian experience. Equally hard is it for others to supply him with necessary light if he already has developed a prejudiced interpretation of the scriptures. The danger of such false security is to give opportunity for the evil spirits to work or to continue to work. We saw earlier how ignorance is the cause of passivity, and passivity the cause of entrenchment. The latter condition would never occur if a Christian had the right knowledge. Actually passivity is a mistake in obedience or consecration. It may additionally be said to be an excessive obedience or consecration. Had he recognized how the evil spirits require man's inertia for their working, he would not have allowed himself to descend into passivity. Had he realized that God does not reduce man to a marionette in order to work, then he would not wait passively to be moved. Ignorance accounts for today's tragic plight among the saints. A Christian requires knowledge in order to distinguish God's working from that of Satan's. He should know the principle of divine operation as well as the condition for satanic operation. He who possesses such knowledge guards himself from the powers of darkness. Since Satan assails the believer with lies, he must be met with the truth. Because he intends to keep the believer in darkness, he must be countered with light. 
Let us learn by heart that the principle governing the working of the Holy Spirit and that of the evil spirit are diametrically opposite. Let us also remember that each operates according to his respective principle. Although the evil spirits are skillful in a variety of camouflages, their working principle remains the same. By examining the inward principles we are able to differentiate what is of the Holy Spirit from what is of the evil spirit, for each invariably acts in accordance with his particular principle.